guys, what's up? I'm Brian here doing another video for you guys and this time I saw the Bumblebee movie and this is going to be my spoiler free review. Although it's more like a rambling thing. Um, and I might say a couple of things that they don't really show in the trailer, but it's nothing like a pinnacle scene or something that you need to wait to actually see the film in full or anything like that. It, it's just going to be minor stuff and I'm going to be as vivid as possible. Um, but if you want absolutely no spoilers whatsoever, uh, then maybe you shouldn't watch this review. But I'm not going to say any deaths or anything like that. Um, so anyways, let's talk about the film in general. What do I think? Uh, I thought it was a good film. Um, I thought it was a fun film. I enjoyed it a lot. Um, it was definitely more emotional than I could definitely say Transformers The Last Night. Um, and I will be kind of comparing the previous Michael Bay films for a while. Um, but, uh, I don't think it's really the pinnacle of cinema, of course. Uh, I, I saw a post someone made saying that, oh, Bumblebee is not a great film. It's not beyond anything. It's a good film, but it's not like, it, you know, that person thought the film was overhyped. And I can kind of see that argument, but I, I think he's kind of missing the point. The thing about Bumblebee is it goes to basics. It doesn't try to one-up the previous Michael Bay film. It just goes for a mo more simpler tone so it can focus on what it's got. And some things I wish it could focus a little more on, like the Decepticons. I thought they were cool, but I wish we could see more of them because there's not much to them that separates them from other Decepticons other than they're the two main bad guys in the film. And I do like Shatter and Dropkick. I, I think they're really cool. But other than that, you know, they, they don't really get enough screen time. Um... But they do good with what they're given. Um, I thought that Bumblebee was a good character as well. Uh, it, it's fun to see because he kind of goes from this cute, innocent character, which you can take in and believe, despite the fact that he is a Cybertronian robot that transforms into a Volkswagen, uh, and he's completely made from metal. Uh, you can believe that he's kind of cute and cuddly. But at the same time, there's also a point where he is a fighter, and you also believe that too, because he's got all these weapons and gears and his moves and whatnot. He just does a fantastic job. Now, I can't go through this review without talking about these Cybertron scenes. There's not really too much going on, but the characters you see in the film will blow your mind because with the Michael Bay universe, you know, they do change a lot from their original characters, which some people like, some people don't. But what I like about this is it kind of blends a, a mix of a more realistic look, but still doesn't jet away from the original traditional designs. Like you do see Wheeljack, you do see uh, Ironhide, you do see um, uh, RC and whatnot, which people have spotted in the trailers. Uh, one major notable character, of course, is Optimus Prime, who gets sprinkled throughout the film. And uh, I, I think Peter Cullen does a great job, of course, as portraying Optimus Prime. I think Optimus Prime looks really good. Um, and I gotta, I gotta take note, the Decepticons look amazing as well. Soundwave looks great. Shockwave actually has one line, but he looks great. And you guys know I love Shockwave. So as soon as I saw him, I went nuts. Um, the Seeker designs are fantastic, too. Uh, th these are things that they could just multiply throughout the film, and you wouldn't mind because the original Generation 1 series did that. But what takes it away from, let's say, Avengers, the first film, or Infinity War, where they just had armies of random bad guys that they just shoot at, is they're only in the Cybertron scenes, and it makes sense because they're overtaking Cybertron. I mean, Cybertron is basically... In complete chaos. So you could take it in. And some of the things that they do to the Seekers and with the Seekers is interesting too. I gotta mention too is that what Travis Knight does with the Transformers is not boring and doesn't get old. 
uh, there is always a couple of new things. In, in fact, there's one scene that threw me off that I thought was very clever at the end scene. Something that Bumblebee does to one of the bad guys. I'm not going to say what it is, but I thought it was a clever use of something that I feel should have been used more often throughout the films. And I, I thought it was a great idea. Um, I also have to mention Blitzwing. He's not in the film that much. Um, but, you know, he's not bad. I, I feel like it should have been a different character. It shouldn't have been Blitzwing. And I do find it weird that we get a kind of generic seeker uh, as Blitzwing. And he's not a triple changer, but we do get triple changers in the film. Like, that doesn't make sense to me. Uh, the Seeker should have been something else. Should have been called something else. Like, Thrust, I would even take. Um, and I'm going to say, I think he's a Seeker. He looks like all the other Seekers. But I kind of have a theory on that, too. Which I'll quickly mention. Is that they might have done this so that Travis Knight could get away with duplicating the Seekers on Cybertron. Because if Blitzwing looks like one of the Seekers, then maybe he can get away with the budget uh, of doing the Cybertron scenes because, I mean, there's a lot of CGI to take in from that. Which, by the way, the CGI looks fine. You know, it, it looks great. You could take in every character. You can figure out who they are. And they're very colorful, too, which I do like. There's always a distinct color between them. Like... Even Starscream, who's just set in the back for the Cybertron scenes, you can pick him out. Even Thundercracker you can pick out, if that is Thundercracker. Um, so I do like that. Um, and going back to what I said about the basics. There's a scene at the end, at the San Francisco Bridge. And that's not really a spoiler, because you do see the San Francisco Bridge in some of the scenes on the trailer. So, not really a spoiler. I'm not going to say specifically what happens. But, I gotta say, is I really love that scene. And I think that was iconic to the film. And pretty much just shows everything that should go right with the film. Because, as I said, this film kind of goes back to basics. It doesn't try to one-up the previous one. It tries to respect Transformers. Because what I think the problem with the Michael Bay universe is it doesn't understand what people are so interested in when it comes to Transformers. You know, we got transforming robots in different media throughout whatever else. But what sets that apart from Transformers? Other than the fact that, oh, anything can transform into anything, like a jet or a car or something else. It was the characters. Wheeljack, Optimus, Bumblebee, Megatron, Soundwave, Shockwave. Such iconic characters that you remember. That people love. Not just from a G1 aspect, but like anyone knows any character from Transformers. Not every character, of course. But, you know, everyone can pick out, okay, that's Optimus Prime. That's Bumblebee. That's Ratchet. That's Ironhide. And I think Michael Bay's universe kind of lost that and just thought about the idea of transforming robots in general. And I also have to mention is Charlie is also a great character to pick up on. Because I think it was Thew that said this. Um, Shia LaBeouf's character kind of was just given the opportunity to do stuff. But Charlie's character actually does stuff in the film. She takes what she knows as an advantage. And I have to point this out. Let's take, for example, uh, Mark Wahlberg's character in Age of Extinction. He was constantly complaining about his, um, his dead wife. But it didn't really lead to anything, and it was mostly in the beginning, and then they just kind of dropped it. With Transformers The Last Night, they brought up a couple of different things, so then they kind of dropped it. With um, Dark of the Moon, I believe it was Carly who had mentioned that her brother, I think, died at war? 
and they didn't really do much with that either. It was just kind of dropped on us and didn't really have much impact with the film. The thing about Travis Knight and his film with Bumblebee is that things aren't just briefly mentioned. Things come up and they hold an impact. Even some of the 80s references come back in the plot, which I really do appreciate. So, I, I don't want to make this review too much longer. But I gotta say this. Even if you don't consider Bumblebee to be a great film in general, I consider it a great step up by going back down to a more basic plot. Yes, I, I think that they kind of just go off and do their own things, like, um, you know, Bumblebee gets into trouble sometimes, and it, it, it there's no real journey throughout most of the film. It, it's just them doing stuff, which I don't really have a problem with, but it did kind of throw me off because I'm so used to all the other Transformers films you know, oh, we have to find this, we have to find that, we have to do, do blah, 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 and this goes to this, and this goes to that. W with this film, it just kind of slows down, and you kind of settle in to what's going on. A and also, I need to point this out as well. The thing about this film compared to, let's say, E.T. and something like that, is that E.T. couldn't really go outside and do other stuff. But the good thing about Bumblebee is he transforms into a Volkswagen Beetle, so he can go around doing stuff. Um, you know, out in the open, he just needs to be in the Volkswagen mode. But if they go to somewhere more private, you know, he can transform there and they can do stuff wherever else. So I think that's a good thing. Uh, the CGI, the transformation is really good. It never gets boring, which is something that's incredible considering that it's another Transformers film and I thought this was a good good film um I think this is a the way to go I, I think this is basically where they should start off again I'm not saying they should restart the whole universe and I will also say this I, I forgot to mention this I know that Bumblebee does come in the 80s rather than back whenever with the whole war against the Nazis and whatever. Um, I know that's kind of debunked now. Um, I, I think they kind of did that on purpose because that scene didn't really go so well for audiences. So I think they just tried to kind of jet away from it. It's kind of like how sometimes in the X-Men universe, uh, they'll just kind of drop certain things and be like, oh yeah, that's irrelevant now or something. Um, so I kind of get what they're going for. It is kind of confusing, but I kind of don't care because I like what they're doing now rather than what they were doing. So even if you like the Michael Bay designs, I get that, but the, there is something I really do appreciate, and I, I gotta say this. To the people who are saying that the Michael Bay designs were great and are better than the G1 designs. You know, you can like the or the uh, Michael Bay aesthetic. You know, I'm not saying anything against that. But for the fans of G1, and not just G1 in general, but the original iconic characters, they have not had their film. This is their film. This is finally their film. I have no problem with that. I have no problem with them finally having their film. We had 10 years of the Michael Bay universe, or that aesthetic. In fact, it's technically still going with studio series. I, I don't think it's a problem for us to have this. On the big screen, something like this? With Optimus Prime looking like that? I don't know. I, I, I just think it's a really good idea. And I do applaud Travis Knight. Um, and I can't see where, or, sorry, I can't wait to see where they go from here. So with that out of the way, that's my opinion on the film. Disagree, agree, that's fine, but that's just how I feel. Anyways, with that said, I thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, share, subscribe, and I'll see you.